Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2 Warhammer Edition. I am Joblivion, and we are back with Serena Tetiana, the Ice Queen of Kislev. And we left off last time declaring war on Erengrad, pretty much demanding that the rebellious city-state bends the knee once again to the crown of Kislev. And we were marching our grand host off to go crush them. Now, for this particular episode, I'm going to do some things that might seem a little uh, out of the blue. And the reason that is is because I've already tried to record, record this episode. But unfortunately, um, the recording didn't sound, that, didn't sound that good. And I was interrupted in the middle of it, so I just scrapped the whole recording about halfway through. So, um... Right. Okay, right. There's that army there. We don't need to worry about that army. This army is the one we need to worry about. So we'll march onto the capital, and we'll crush this measly force, and we will take the capital by force. But, uh, essentially, there are a few things laid out that I did in, the, in, in my attempted recording of this episode that I'm just going to redo this time because there's some pretty damn good decisions. So I'm going to just redo them. Um, there's not many of them. So it's pretty much just conquering these guys, taking Erengrad. Uh, Serena Tetiana of Kislev has inherited Kutor of Pusantra from... Uh, uh, yeah... Long, complicated names. Was slain by Prince Oleg of Erengrad in personal combat. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Well, we need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of that. Um, Levy's raised for too long. Yeah, sure, whatever. We need to create titles. Yep, we'll do that. Um, maybe I can give my... Uh, maybe I can give my husband some some stuff. Yeah, let's do that. He'll like me a little bit more, and he'll be a little bit more powerful as my husband. Great. Okay, and I will smash this force here. So pretty much decisions included invading this place, taking it by force. We can assault it. It's not a big problem. We instantly win because we drag everybody out of their hiding holes. Offer them peace. Take all of this. And then with the war over, we should... Um, Rosinian Peasant Revolt. All right, well, I don't think that'll be a problem. They shouldn't, they shouldn't affect us. If they cross into our borders, we'll have to crush them. So now we have the port of Erengrad. Title succession on loss. Don't care. Compressed is your claims. Krajna. Oh, okay. Krakjunov. We can press the claim for that. Neat. All right. So with Erengrad subjugated, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to do what I did last time. And I'm going to offer vassalization to Voivod Voivodi Nalka of Duckhills. And the reason I'm going to do that is because he will accept. What will happen is all of this territory will become ours. We'll join Kislev because I think uh, uh, Nalka, at the tender age of 10 years old, is afraid. I think he's he's kind of by himself. He doesn't have any family. He doesn't know how to run his realm. He has terrible traits. And I think he fears for the safety of his people. And because he is of the Ghost Bordor tribe, and he also worships the Ursanite, he kind of sees Kislev, especially Serena Tetiana, as a strong ruler that he can rely on to protect him. So we're going to offer him vassalization, and he should accept. It will greatly increase our territory. We're not going to be able to do that for the other tribes, because I think they're of different cultures and different religions. But just to double check, well, you know what? We'll wait till after he uh, gives us vassalization, or Swords Fealty, I should say. And this is going to make our... It's going to make our threat level go up. People are going to find us a lot more threatening because our, our, our territory is expanding so quickly. To the clever, smarty, Tetiana, peace be with you. I accept to swear fealty to you. Good lad. Good lad. You've made the right choice. And so now we are threatening. 11%. Not the worst thing that can happen. Ooh, what's this? With over 5%, other realms can form defensive packs to protect themselves from you. Okay. And then, there, and then there's some weird percentages after that. With over... It seems a million percent. Oh, okay. I'm guessing Geheimas Noct has made some changes to the threat system to kind of balance it out. Oh, interesting. I see. Well, uh, defensive packs still work, so we'll have to wait for our threat level to go down. But uh, we can see that uh, just like that, my territory has expanded... 
Uh, quite significantly, actually. Now, what I want to do is I want to look up religions here. And as we can see, the rest of them... What, um, what religion is this? Northern. Northern gods, old gods. Yeah, but why are they white? Shouldn't they be dark green? Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Okay. So we're probably not going to be able to uh, do the same thing with the other tribes. We're probably going to have to, or we're not going to be able to offer them vassalization. We're going to have to just straight up conquer them, which is fine by me. Ooh, look at the train here. Yeah, got some open plains and stuff. That's great. We'll go back to realms. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that with the other smaller kingdoms, which is fine. We'll crush them with force. Um, what I am kind of concerned about, though, is these other religions that are kind of encroaching on our territory. You know, we've got the we've got the wolf being worshipped in the south. We've got the northern gods making their way into our territory. I don't like that. We need to change that. What the fuck is this? Oh, okay. All the peoples of the territories of the Duck Hills that have just uh, sworn fealty are northern gods. Interesting. That could be a problem. Another thing I've noticed is Sylvania is not quite as large as I remember them. For some reason, defending against... Defending against... Yeah. Why are you no longer subservient to Sylvania. That doesn't really make sense to me. Why are you attacking Emperor Siegfried of the Imperial Reichland in Sylvanian Imperial Reichlander subjugation? Oh, okay. Maybe in the last recording I did, they invaded Ostland, because I'm pretty sure last time the Sylvania's borders bordered us all along here. Right, but it appears they're going straight for Imperial Reichland. Oh yeah, they also did attack the Imperial Westerland. Okay, so instead of going for here and here, they're just going straight for the heart of the Empire with 32,000 men. I don't think the Empire is going to be able to resist with only barely 10,000. Yeah, I don't think so. But um, yeah, Grand Count Detlef of Wissenland. Where's Wissenland? I have no idea. Is Westland up here? Westland, no. Middenland. I don't know who his ally is. Okay, interesting. <laughs> okay, doesn't really matter to me. We're going to press time on, and we need to figure out how are we going to... Exp um, ooh, we can press a claim. Uh, fate of the Arengrad Vechi. The center of Republican rule in Arengrad has long been its Vechi, the seat of their burger republic, as a powerful symbol of their popular rule and the administrative heart of their republic. Destroying it will break their will and discourage any further discussion of self-rule. However, allowing them to retain it will be seen as a gesture of the Zarina's mercy and will do much to cement their loyalty to the Zarina in Kislev. So I dealt with the same decision previously, and I'm going to stick with my choice and that is we're going to burn the Vechi. Um, we're going to do that because we get some decent stuff. Some people get pissed off. The patricians don't like it, but uh, they they can they need to bend the knee. And the reason we're destroying the Vechi is because I feel as if Kislev has fallen on hard times because they've become complacent. They've become soft. They've become too merciful. They've become lazy. And in order to reestablish the Zardom... Kislev's going to need an iron fist, and Serena's going to have to be that iron fist, even though, even though, strangely enough, she doesn't really have the traits for it. She doesn't look like the, the type being a craven, arbitrary uh, individual, but you know what? We're turning over a new leaf. She's reestablishing the Zardom. What is, uh, does Uliana have any good traits yet? Hmm. Whoop. Apologies. I just woke up, so apologies for any yawning or anything like that. We need to get someone better to uh, take care of her. We need some um, shit. But what kind of what kind of traits do we want to focus on? Kislev is a hardy, warlike people, so I'm thinking maybe military would be best. He's got organizer, duelist, lustful, shy. Not the greatest traits. 
What about cruel? What does that offer us? Not really what we want. Um, scholar, just paranoid. We need to have someone who will give Princess Ulyana some decent traits. And I mean, proud is fine, temperate is good, cruel, not so much. It hurts diplomacy, makes your vassals not like you. Ambitious is a really good trait to have. At least it looks like ambition, ambition opinion, minus 25, I see. Um, is there anyone else? Anyone else who's got some decent traits? We've got Zealous, which is good, just honest and humble. He might be a good candidate. Assuming he... Oh, we've got Charitable, Trusting, Temperate, and Ambitious. Dutiful Cleric. I'm not sure if this shit will make a difference. What about how's Trusting look? Minus two Intrigue, plus one Diplomacy. Uh, sure. Yeah, we'll use you. We'll use you, sir. Go ahead and burn the Vechi. We get 500 gold. We lose Prestige, unfortunately. Um, we get Territories. We get Greedy. Okay, so she gets greedy, and that's more tax money. Hurts her diplomacy, but doesn't really matter. Wrong type holding is the Zupa of Arangrad, and the reason that is is because this is actually a city, and we need to get rid of this. We need to give it to somebody. Can I give that to my uh, Asana Guardian? Oh, okay. Can I give it to my brother? Probably. The Zupa of Arangrad. Sweet. Um, is there anything else for Aaron Grad? No. Maybe I should give him Plaus as well. Maybe. He is my brother after all. Yeah, but he's got a claim on Aaron Gra on the Zardom. Hmm. I see. Which might make him want to declare war on me. But hopefully we can placate him with titles. And he only has 500 men. It's not a big deal. Not compared to our six to six, seven thousand. Um, somebody said, most likely uh, my war council advisor, or Hand of the King, Josh Street, he said that you can use control and left click. Or Oh, shit. There it is. Is that it? I think that's it. Control left click, you can look at your sub direct domain so you can see what exactly you own in theory. Yes. Ooh, okay. We need to. Uh, <clears throat> we need to change the house name and sigil. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But uh, seeing as how. The first episode of this has only been uh, released today. I'll give you guys some more time to suggest potential house names and sigils. And if uh, nobody provides any examples, then I'm just going to make something up because I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at that. I'm pretty good. I've got some very original ideas, you know, like naming everything after myself. You could certainly do that. Oh, wow. Look at that money. And as you all know, I like to have a base, a baseline treasury of a thousand gold. Holy crap, that's a lot of money. I like to have a baseline gold of a, of, of a thousand, and then everything over that we can spend. So, and Kislev is, is, is really well developed already. Um, let's go back to my direct domain. Maybe developing this stuff would be good. I don't know if it will be, because a lot of this stuff is really developed, so I don't really see the point. Maybe building refuges? Or hospitals? Right, in this case, they'd be hospitals. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. We'll make a hospital. We don't want... We don't want Kislev being racked by disease. We don't want that at all. We can't afford it. So let's go and see... Who we can invade next. We can press a claim, or at least we could. Yeah, go ahead and pause it. <clears throat> Whoa, holy war. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like inquisitions. Serena Tetiana 
of Kislev can use his Cass's belly to seize all titles held by the infidel Vovodi Yefimia of Zaya within the de jure duchy of Bolgasgrad. This Cass's belly is valid against neighbors and also against infidels up to two seasons away if either the attacker or the defender is a. Yeah, okay, well, we're not. We would lose piety if we did this. Um, we would vassalize lords of her, of her of her religion and takes all other titles. So it seems in theory. Ooh, moral authority is fifty-two percent. I see. We have speakers of our religion. Interesting. I'm not sure. So I'm not really going to worry about moral authority too much. Oops, excuse me again. I'm not going to worry about moral authority too much. Um, but we could use an Inquisition War. Maybe we can do the Inquisition War against the Ungols. So the, the only drawback to an Inquisition War is, because, is one, the piety cost. But also, more importantly, when you do an Inquisition War, what happens is... All other, all other factions that have the same religion. So let's say that we did save up our piety and decided to wage an Inquisition war on Khan King Elika. All other factions that follow the Northern Gods... Sorry, I had something in my ear. All other factions that follow the Northern Gods may or may not rise up in their defense. Ooh. My friend would like to go carousing. Great. Yeah, so anyone anyone else who follows the Northern Gods would avenge would uh, not necessarily guaranteed but could could have the opportunity to rise up in defense of their fellow Northern God worshipers. Ooh, slain by Oleg in single combat and this is Grand Prince Timotheus the Fine, Prince of Ostland. Ostland has... Ostland! We should ally against the vampire... The vampire threat. Oh, sweet. Making Vlad like me a little bit more. Hopefully that'll prevent him from attacking me. But I don't know that for, for certain. Yeah, so Inquisition Wars can be super useful. Um, but you kind of have to be careful because... Uh, other factions might join their cause. For example, the Linskir. Oh, actually, no, the Linskir. Well, as far as this guy is concerned, he worships corn. Yeah. They are. Ah, okay. The people worship the northern gods, but they're de but the guy who rules their country is uh, a follower of corn. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. How are we going to spread our borders? We must continue our wars. Let's see. Well, I mean, because we have the Zardom, we can just expand just because. They have three, 4,000 men, 300 gold, so they could probably buy mercenaries. We have got 7,000 men. And we've got more than enough gold, too. We could invade Zaya. But we would only be able to claim, like, one thing. That little territory. This little territory. It's not that, it's not that small, but it is certainly... I'd like to pick something on the border, ideally. Yeah, those are across the river. I'd like this one. S Salaire. But before we do that, they're going to do... Oh, shit. There's some crazy shit going on over here. Some crazy vampires, it seems. No, Nagashi. Well, they are vampires, but they're they're Nagash. Um, the Ungols definitely have a lot of troops. Can't declare war on them because we've been on aggression pact with them, unfortunately. They have 2.32... And we could claim, well, really any of these. Do they have any allies? Oh, 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 shit. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't. 
Uh, I was reminded about my threatening level because that would have been terrible if I had gone and just started declaring wars. Alright, let's just keep focusing on building up the refuges while our threat level decreases. Uh, yeah, this is not good. Not good. My brother is being a bastard. And he's trying to, uh, want seat on the council. Wrong government type. No, you son of a bitch. There's 800 men. Not good. Alright. Michaela Lina. My friend. No, you stay there. It is you, Boyar Rostislav. I need you to do something. I need you to scheme. I need you to scheme in Arengrad and make my brother... Stop conspiring to take the throne from me. And then this girl wants independence. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Ah, because she's zealous. That's why. Well. Uh, Michaela Lina is clearly going overboard with her drinking. Well, she is a drunkard. Epic hangover. Well fed. Yep, she is a drunkard. Well, you know, we are best friends, so I guess you just have to kind of live with that. I thought I saw magic power plus five. Yeah, I thought I saw somewhere where my magic would be, but I think that might be for Elder Kings, not for this. Okay, great. And uh, Serena gets dedicated Krauser. I thought she already was a dedicated Krauser. No, she's not. Great. Her diplomacy goes up. Yay! Yay! And then we should actually be able to invite them out to go crossing. I guess not. Hmm. All right. Let's take a look at my council. I want to see who's on my side. Uh, Advisor Rawa. We probably should kick him off. What we should probably do... Let's see. Advisor Stepan... You're my marshal. You're my spy master. You're my steward. You're my priest. And I've got two advisors. So what I might do is I I probably can get I probably can get um We probably can get some council laws changed. Get some things put back in control of the crown. And I think one of the most important things we can do is get imprisonment. Everyone's against it except for my best friend Michaela Lina. So we don't need to use a uh, we don't need to use a favor on her. We could use favors on all these guys, and I'm I'm okay with them actually staying on the council. Then we could use it on these two guys and just boot them off because they're just random advisors. They're not really that important. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to request council support. He's going to say no because he hates me. I'm going to request council support from you. I'm going to request council support from you. And you. And you. Oh. My spy master. Well, you've just made your candidate. You made. Yeah, I mean, you've made yourself a candidate to be kicked off the council. So. For dare. For daring to oppose the Zarina. Okay, one, that was my marshal, that was my court priest, that was this guy, I th and that was my steward, so one, two, three, four, I think that's all of them, yes, I believe that's all of them, now let's go here and we'll vote for ruler imprisonment, and we have the numbers. So now, oh, brilliant. Now, assuming that the council now doesn't just immediately vote on changing it back, we can now imprison vassals without needing to get the approval of the council if they prove to be disloyal, which is huge. Okay, then what we need to do is let's go back to the council, go to my council, and we're going to fire this counselor because he's a bastard. 
And then we're going to fire this counselor, which will make him hate us. And then we're going to fire my spy master because he's doing a shit job. Go ahead and scheme an Aaron grad. Is he still on my council? He shouldn't be. Great. So we owe a favor to our marshal, to the steward, and to the court priest. That's fine. Let's go through here and find some people that are loyalists. Oh, beautiful. Fantastic. This is how you maneuver the council. This is how you work politics. And we are one step closer towards... And then let's make this guy the court jester, because he's been a disloyal bastard, and he, he needs to be punished for it. Awesome. So it is going to make this faction larger. In fact, that is quite quite a good amount of men. That was the ex-spy master. The ex-spy master. So hopefully my new spy master will be able to convince Prince Radislav to stop well, supporting his own claim to the throne. Unfortunate as that is. The duchy would cost 198 gold. I think I'm going to create this title. Would give us more prestige, and it seems like we could really use more prestige. What's our threat level at? 8%? It is taking quite some time. Quite some time to get this to go down. It is going down, though, and the reason why I want it to go down is I don't want to be dogpiled by a bunch of... Uh, Oops. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, we could increase. Uh, let's slow it down a little bit. It's it's the game's getting kind of laggy. Uh, I just don't want to get dogpiled by the defensive packs. That would ruin our day. So now we should have. Mikhail Lina has formed an alliance with Prince Rodoslav of Kislev. My best friend better not be planning anything. Look at that income, twenty, almost twenty-one. I like it. Alright, then let's go ahead and create this duchy. Gives us prestige. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's going to cause any kind of uh, title claimant pretender. Yep. Alright, open council positions. My marshal is gone. Is he dead? I'm not sure. Won't seat on the council... Decreased council power. If I give him a seat on the council, it will raise his disposition by 40. Which would put him at positive 30, right? Yes. Brilliant. Welcome back to the fold, sir. Go ahead and train my armies again. And we've got two more titles we can create. This one's the same thing. For around 200, I can get another 200 prestige. And then there's this one, the Kingdom of Rupsmania, which would cost me lots of gold and lots of piety, but would give me tons of... You need 200 piety to create a kingdom. Oh, okay. Do I want to create a kingdom? I, I don't know. I think I'm going to, but if you guys can come up with a better reason for not doing it, please, please, please let me know. Let me know. We're... I don't want to be setting up the kingdom of Kislev to fail. Is it a kingdom or is it in a Tsardom? It's a Tsardom, yes. All right, let's go back to Kislev. That's the capital and it's the crown focus. Excellent. We could also make new buildings. Which maybe we could use a bit more uh, uh, shrines around. Just to get that, that piety. Whoa. Military tech, disease... Tech. Oh, yeah, technology is involved in this, too. But the technology is, like, a lot of this stuff's already pretty on its way to advancing, so... That's good, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they're at level 6.7. Maybe we can... Known plots. Kill Ucha. Yeah, I can't... He's, he's a con king, though. I can't do much against him. This character has gone into seclusion, undertaking a great work of attempting to create a magical artifact which may last years and end up costing a king's ransom. Two weak claims can be pressed. That's great. Um, has personal wealth, is not incapacitated, does not have the trait crafting a magical item. Recruit a soldier. I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to see what we can get, but... Um, oh, no. 
Not good. Hmm. My brother has a thousand men. This guy has one thousand. I'm pleased to report that your errant subject, Etzel von Hillekor Ungor, has converted to the Ursinate faith. Praise Daz. Yes, praise Daz indeed. But I need you to convert the county. I don't care about individuals. Yeah, the internal politics of the Zardom are looking kind of... Looking kind of dangerous at the moment. Let's see if we can't arrest any of these people for anything. Using this option is viewed as tyrannical. Yep, they won't like that. Um, I could plot to kill her. And the option for that happening is actually quite high. I would challenge to a duel, but... Um, that would be a bit too dangerous. Shit. And then inviting them to go carousing probably wouldn't be a good idea. I could probably invite my brother to go carousing. And we'll see if we can't become best friends with him. Um, let's see. Can we kill this guy? Oh, wow. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. There is quite the... Who's his heir? Hmm. Maybe that would be necessary. Let's go to my plots. And we'll see just how many people we can go. Oh, we, Jesus. He is really disliked. Oh, yeah. Dear sister, I cannot join you. What a bastard. What a bastard. All right. Um, I could invite my husband, but I don't really want to do that. Let's try to invite... Considering an invite a plot request. Oh, okay. Let's invite you. Let's invite you. I want everybody on my council to come carousing with me. Nothing too serious. We're just going to invite you to carouse. Let's invite her to carouse. Oh, we can't. I see. Alright. And then I'll invite my mother. And I'll invite Ratislav. Let's, let's, let's bring him too. I'm just going to throw a big ol' hoot nanny. It'd be a, an epic box social. Great, my steward's on board. My court priest is on board. My marshal is being a dick. Um, my husband is being a dick. That's kind of weird. Why would my husband? Why would my husband decline that? Decline that glorious offer. Here's assuming it's because he's busy doing his job, whatever his job is, and that other advisors disagreed. Well, they will regret doing that. I think I need 250 if I want to craft a magical item. I don't really know what it'll do, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. And we got Ulyana. Maybe I should be raising Ulyana. Maybe I should be. Yeah, I think I should be, because then I can actually control what uh, traits she can get. Sorry, buddy, but uh, I can't stop thinking of all those prisoners in my dungeon they are completely at my mercy. What a thrill it would be to hurt them to hear this. I didn't know I had prisoners. I have prisoners? Oh, wow. I have a few, actually. How long have they been in my dungeons? Oh, for a year. Okay. Ransom, no. No. I don't really want to torture. Resist my foul urges. I don't really want to do that. I want to gain piety. I don't want to lose piety. And I'm not really sure why they're in... Oh, these must be the people that we captured after taking Erengrad. Yeah, let's just... Uh, let's just release them. I, I just... You know, just be nice. Release them. Don't hurt them. Unfortunately, they stayed in my dungeons for a year. But... I guess it's better than a lifetime. Cool, massive recruitment drive. Threatening is... Oh, it's, it's, it's getting there. I'm glad they accept your guardianship. Great. My armies. Our armies. We need more men. I want everybody to give me their men. More levies or more gold? I think I want more levies. No known societies. Oh, man. These factions... Serenic so Tetiana's rule has not been perfect so far. Kislev has grown in size, but unfortunately, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, conspiring and resistance to her her rule. And unfortunately, she may be facing internal internal turmoil. 
All right. Well, too bad there's, we can't invite anybody else here. There, that plot. How's that plot doing? That plot is two hundred. Awesome, and we have lost our threatening, threatening level. Good drinks, crossing, everything's fine, or was fine until Speaker Ur Ursuslav unexpectedly threw a fit of rage. Well, I mean, he is possessed, so I must escape and hide. Well, hmm. God, oh, I am yawning way too much. Well, she is craven already, so he could run away and escape, and we would suffer no negative, no negativity for that. If she stays in fights, she just gets wounded, and there's a chance that she becomes bitter rivals with her court priest. I don't think that's a good idea. Let's just run away. It's not like she can get any more cowardly. Um... Whoa, Boyar Ratislav, oh yeah, like I'm going to trust this guy, of Belev has pro provided me proof that Boyar Ilyich of Wisna, my steward, has been viciously slandering me. How dare he? Is he Boyar Ilyich? Is he a part of any factions that we know of? It doesn't seem like he is. No. So I'm going to keep this information to myself. Do not use the information against him. Because it's most likely lies. And even if it is true, I want people who... I don't care if he's talking smack about me as long as... Uh, as long as he's loyal. Let's see. He's angry for not being on the council. Is he now? Want seat on the council. Uh, I mean, maybe. But uh, I kind of like my council as it is. The reveling crossing is over for now. Time to get back to real life. This is real life. Gains hedonist. And hedonist gives us fertility, diplomacy, intrigue. We lose the Christian church opinion. Opposite trade opinion. We also get socializer. Diplomacy plus three. Attraction opinion. Same trade opinion. Hmm. This character is committed to being well-liked. Let's see, four, five, six, seven. That give her seven, di seventeen diplomacy, and I think attraction opinion means plus ten to the opposite sex. So, but this would give her twenty percent fertility, diplomacy, and intrigue. The church is unlikely to approve. Yeah, not likely. Um, what would be better? I mean, she's already got plus 20 fertility as it is. She only has one child. That's the, that is kind of concerning. Uh, hedonist. Yeah, but another 20%. That could be huge. Hmm. But then a socializer could be huge, too. Let's pick socializer. I feel like that's more something that uh, the Serena would be doing. Socializing, making everybody like her. Now... That should have gone up to 17, but it didn't. It only went up by one. That's kind of bullshit, in my opinion. Unless there's some explanation for that. Let's see. Uh, ooh, paste. Let's see if I got that socializer. Attraction to socializer, plus 10. Great. Awesome. And with the threat level gone, we can go and we can press more claims. In fact, we might even be able to... Let's see, he's got almost 5,000. We've got 7,000. The, the Khan King is gaining in strength, which is very concerning. However, we do have a non-aggression pact with him, but I feel like that is part of the reason why he's growing in strength, is because he's not being kept in check by Kislev. So we may have to end our non-aggression pact with the Khan King and... Put those northern heathens to the sword. That's what we might have to do. We have an enormous treasury. We have enormous armies. Kislev is resurgent. We are returning from the shadows and we are going to put them all beneath our heel. But that's going to have to be in the 
next episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. This has been Crusader Kings 2 Geheim is Knocked Warhammer Edition. I have been the Golden Joe Oblivion. And until next time, see you guys later.